seeing the transformation of a standard 911 Carrera into a new 178,500 pound GT3 RS rams at home even more. This is a very extreme road car. Quite the celebration for 50 years of the Rennsport badge. There is so much to look at on this new RS, from that rear wing, to the gorgeous wheels, to the new switches inside that allow you to change things like the compression and rebound of the dampers, front and rear, on the fly. This is the standard RS, but we also managed to snag some shots of Visac pack components on a prototype vehicle. Things like the mag wheels, carbon cage and new paddles. Of course, there's only one person to talk us around all these details. Andreas Preuninger, the man in charge of Porsche's GT cars. As ever, he's so knowledgeable and enthusiastic that he makes my job blissfully easy. So, by and large, I just let him talk. And to kick things off, I suggested he tell us about the most visible changes for this new 992 GT3 RS, the aerodynamics. Let's start with the aero, because I think that why? seems like the, but why? <laughs> the, why? Obvious, <laughs> the obvious thing, huh? Yeah. Because aero was important, as, uh, as you can see. <laughs> lots of body cuts out, lots of vents, lots of veins and, and, and air guiding elements on the, on, on the car and um, that's, that's there for a reason. I would say you could divide this aero discussion in three, in three levels. And let's start with the upper level, yeah. um, which is above the car. Yeah. We have for the first time in that car, on a street vehicle car, a central radiator. In former times on the 981 we had a radiator at the sides each and one smaller one, one smaller unit down low in the middle. Now we're going full, the full motorsport route, like the RSR or like the, like the R. They have a central cooler unit. And uh, that has some very, very uh, um, um, uh, positive side effects because we don't need a cooler anymore at the sides that frees up space um, for the active aerodynamics. But maybe that's, that's a point uh, for later. Let's start with the radiator. It sits yeah. here, it's a motorsport part. It has less surface than all the three coolers we had in former times, so it has to be a lot more efficient. Okay. Uh, so the stream and the, the material in itself, like I said, it's a very expensive motorsport part, has to be more efficient, uh, it's very important. Um, as you can see, the car is almost finished, uh, we, we, we made it, uh, so uh, it's, it's the cooling's working. Um, so we have here the cooler sitting in there, a little disadvantage for our customers, um, there's no trunk space anymore. <laughs> So you have to it's get not your, a shopping car. Well, <laughs> you <laughs> have to get your stuff behind the seats. Um, but um, I think it's worth it because um, yeah, we, 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 have a, we have a big, uh, a big, uh, a big uh, advantage with the central cooling unit. It's lighter as well as three coolers, uh, seven kilos lighter than the three cooler system. That's a nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we take the air behind the cooler above the car which uh, creates a little bit of a, of, a, of a challenge, not a problem, a challenge, but this is uh, solved by these boomerangs here. Because you said these weren't here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is always on there and um, we need it because uh, there's, another, there's another flap down low that guides and directs the air to the sides of the car. So we don't want to have the air streaming above the car. Why not? Because it's hot air, because there's a lot of heat. You know? After each, uh, behind each radiator, and we have to get this heat away from the intake system on the back of the car, because the engine prefers cool, oxygen-rich yeah. air, as a matter of fact. So we have to find a way to guide it around, and that's the first, uh, the first measure. Um, all the air that's coming out here is guided to the sides. Positive effect for cold countries. <laughs> you can always drive with the window open. There's always a stream of hot air caressing you <laughs> when you drive. Um, uh, in the summertime, it's even hotter than, than, than outside. That's uh, the downside, but well. And then you see this, uh, this fins here, mm. which at the first, uh, at, at first they are completely new to the 911 silhouette. Um, I kind of like them now as an RS-specific thing. And these are there to prevent the air, because the air coming out of the nostrils and the front tends to go up here in the middle of the car, um, ending up again <laughs> at the back where we don't want it. So, and these little things here prevent that because the airstream is guided to the side of the car. So it goes around, goes up, and then goes back down here and leaving here 
cold ambient air uh, with a lot of oxygen and alone if you would take away the fins and this boomerang nostrils you would have on a warm day 20 horsepower less at least wow. and that's a bit that's a big numbers well so and it's worth pointing out in conjunction with that that the what were the intakes on the side in previous models they're no longer intakes the engine there that's something that we have to discuss when we come yeah, to the engine right <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> let us continue with the with the with the airflow i mean this was talk of the town the rear spoiler <laughs> quite logically and um, I understand that. I think it looks very, very aggressive and a lot more beautiful than on the spy cars or on the spy cars, on the spy shots of the prototypes. Um, it's an active element. It sits very high up. Um, with, the, with the active flap being in the high downforce position, I think it's even a little above the roof line, which is wow for a street car. And um, it sits in clean air because it's so high up, very efficient. And uh, these two hydraulic rams operate the rear flapper, and not only in two positions, in infinite positions. So the car always decides how much downforce it can take at the moment and how much downforce it's necessary. Wow. And that's a cool thing. It's not just a so I assumed it was on just and the off RS thing. No, no, no. Break, there's so there's such a clever system uh, working for the driver in that moment. It's, it's really and it works. I tell you, it works. It's 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 incredible. And um, the max downforce we can make with the car, but it's not only the upper side, we're coming to the other sides as well, is um, as if you would have a, a horse sitting on the roof with its body. So it's two horses, 860 kilos on a Döttinger straight, um, which is 280, 285 kilometers, it's quite a lot. It's uh, more than twice than the predecessor had. And uh, even at 200 kilometers per hour, that's 122 miles, yeah. uh, it's 409 kilos which is uh, about as much as we, as we, that we have on the last car at top speed. Um, so th this is what happens on the, on the, on the, on the, on the front of the car. Um, but we should mention that it's not only, it's not only the, uh, the, 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 the active system that you see here, because as you know, a car always has to stay in aerodynamic balance. And just producing downforce at the back, lifting the front up, doesn't make sense because the light front feels not good. Like an old line. And so we need something to, to, to as, a, as a countermeasure uh, to keep the car in balance. And that's in the front again. We just talked about the central radiator freeing up the space of the side radiators that has been there before. So we have an aero module that you can't see right now. Yeah. But the air that enters here goes through a diffuser that has a similar flap than uh, the one we see in the back. Um, being absolutely synchronized in, in, in infinite uh, positions with the one in the back. So the, the balance of the car, when that moves, the flappers in front move as well, changing the downforce um, at the same degree than on the back. So you have always 30% at the front and 70 at the back in all speeds. And this is, uh, this is what you feel as a driver. There's no aerodynamical balance shift in the car. Even under hard braking, it's always absolutely exact because why? This is a suspension point. Um, we have different pivot points in the car. The car has, an, has, an, has a um, passive anti-dive system and it never, even under the hardest braking on the track, uh, will, 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 will uh, pull its nose Stand. down, changing the aerodynamics because as soon as the car changes its stance, okay. aerodynamical um, distribution between the front right and back and varies. Side. Yeah, so there's these two error modules which are completely, completely new and bespoke. These are electromechanical, so there's little, very little, very light <laughs> electric motors uh, operating this, this, this flapper things. In the back we have an electro-hydraulical system, so we have a hydraulic pump that sits uh, below the spoiler, connected with, uh, with lines, with hydraulic lines to these rams because a lot more force down there, up there you couldn't, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to have an electric motor up there because it would have called for, for a case in some kind, which would have been in the airstream, looking ugly, and um, the better way to do is like that. So this would be, the, this would be the, 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 the first part of the aerodynamics. What you can see as well, so, and that brings us to the lower side, is the, the underbody. It has 14 different veins where we tell the air where to go, where we want it mostly away from the car. <laughs> and um, a complete new um, revised brake cooling system. So the brakes is really, really um, um, very, very, uh, very, really well cooled in that case. So there's a lot of new elements down there to concentrate really on the trackability of the car. That's a track car, definitely. It's not a car I tell the people with to go to the mountains and drive around. 
Maybe people will sneer at you if you drive with that car, <laughs> but depends on the country. Um, this is really a track weapon. And um, yeah, the underbody is with a full, with a full working diffuser with NACA ducts uh, to, the, to, the, to the gearbox, uh, additional cooling for the gearbox if you compare it to the predecessor or to the GT3, mm -hmm. additional cooling for the engine, the engine has more cooling capacity as well, all to, um, yeah, to, 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 better, to better deal uh, with a hot day on the track. And, um, yeah. yeah. And we've that got was the lower side. I'll let you talk. I'll talk well, we've got sort of, because the other aerodynamic bit, we've obviously got the splitter at the front, but we've got the front suspension. We've still got the wishbones, but they're now different uh, teardrop design. Is that right? Exactly. So everything that is normally not aerodynamically involved in the car plays an aerodynamic role too here, like the wishbones, the steering rod, uh, both wishbones, the lower and the upper. And uh, the control arms, they're all aerodynamically shaped on this double wishbone front axle. And believe it or not, alone this measure makes 40 kilos of downforce additionally. And attacking directly at the suspension, which is exactly where we want to want to have it. It's like in a Formula One car, when you have the helmet camera and you see this, uh, this, uh, this wing-like struts of the suspension working, that's exactly what's happening here. And it's, it's forged aluminum, very strong and uh, it has it really an aerodynamical purpose because with a wing like that you have on a 911 you have to look for all the downforce you can get at the front which is uh, where these obviously came from this is the venting the venting yeah. of the wheel houses that we know but if you look at the door the door is another enabler for the aerodynamics which brings us to the body it's a carbon fiber door for the first time we use a carbon fiber door on a 911 or on any street legal car we know it from the cup cars you can't really compare it because a cup car has a complete roll cage. It has, it's, it's allowed to have a lot, much lighter door, but this door fulfills all the safety standards and still is made of carbon fiber inside and out. And that gave us the opportunity, if you look at, this, at, the, at the shape of the door, we can vent the wheelhouses a lot better mm -hmm. because from here on, the normal 911 door would continue here, but we squeezed it in a little to the inside to free up here a channel-like opening to get more air quicker out of the out of out of the wheel wells, which is, would be the middle side of the aerodynamics I didn't talk about yet, which we need the veins that the air really is hugging the car and is not creating swirls down here, and uh, it works pretty well. So we have to have to do a lot of things to get the downforce at the front um, to be able to yeah have a counter uh, have a counterpart to the big wing in the back. It's nice because it's reminiscent of the GT1, isn't it? The, well, I mean, the GT, it's and reminiscent to any kind of uh, uh, thoroughbred <laughs> race car because uh, they like to have open wheelhouses. Yeah. Just look at the back, same thing. Yeah. We need to vent those wheelhouses. We don't want to get air trapped here inside because it lifts the car up, which is uh, counterproductive. <laughs> And I also like, there's a, a little detail which is obviously not aero, but the, um, the indicator repeaters yeah. in there. The indicator light is <laughs> hidden in this, in this strut here that holds the vein, which looks very cool at night yeah. uh, because all this area is illuminated. Um, looks like a little bit spaceshipy, which is cool, very modern, yeah. and uh, it's a nice trick. Yeah. Um, as we're here, wheels. As big wheels. Here, big wheels. Big wheels. 10 inches at the front, yeah. 275s, um, also available as the R compound, um, three suppliers. And, um, and that's as opposed to a 255 on a G, normal G3, yep. isn't it? Exactly. So and we have a 10 inch uh, opposed to a 9.5. 9 yeah. And uh, we have offered three different uh, wheels for the car. What you see here is the aluminum version with the cutouts, the lightweight aluminum version. It's one and a half kilos lighter than the stock wheel. And we have a magnesium wheel that comes along with the Weissach package uh, that shaves off another eight kilos of the car's weight. Um, on the back, we have 13 inch wide rims. Um, quite a lot. Three, three, <laughs> and three, three, five. So the contact patch of that thing is really remarkable. And um, it shows because uh, you need a lot of contact patch, a lot of grip when you can produce so much downforce and together. You end up at cornering speeds with a Cup R compound tire on that car that are beyond a cup car on slicks, <laughs> full stop. So all the, all the customers, they should work their, 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 their neck, neck muscles <laughs> yeah, because it's really, really a different league in the high speed corners of a, of a track. That is extraordinary. Um, what should we talk about? Race car out there. Yeah, a Sorry, loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice soundtrack to have. Um, 
talking next, I suppose, in terms of um, we've also got the diffuser down the back. We finish the the aero yep. side of things. Diffuser down the back, which is fairly similar to GT3. It's, it's, it's enlarged. Uh, has different strakes or different runners, and it's um, it's uh, it's it's developed to to work in uh, to work in synchronization with all the other measures of these veins that are hidden or not hidden, but you can't see it uh, on the underbody. Yeah. Um, and just coming back to the rear wing, so we'd, we've got there's an air brake function to it, yeah. as well as then obviously the DRS um, button for exactly. Uh, the air brake is quite interesting because um, it really helps a lot. And if if you if you if you measure the braking distance from when you have 122 miles, 200 kilometers, it's two and a half meters distance uh, or difference uh, with or without air brake. So you. Saves you two and a half meters, which is which is quite. quite I mean, when the faster you are, the more it is. Yeah. So it's really really helpful, and yeah, and you can operate like in a Formula One car uh, from the steering wheel. You can operate the uh, the flappers and the car front and back with the DRS button um, to create downforce or to take it away when Still you written. when you when you when you want to do it manually, and which works great on an autobahn, on an empty autobahn, as a matter of fact, because when you're approaching a a curve at high speeds, let's say 150 miles or more, and uh, you're not so confident when you pr pr press the DDRS and the car really settles down, like as it was, would, would, would click into some rails yeah, and goes around that even in the wet, it's incredible what the air does to this car driving. It's, it's absolutely mind-boggling. And, um, and it's fun to, to play around with the DRS button. <laughs> um, Coming back to the suspension, so it's 29 millimeters wider track. At it's 29 mil wider than on the GT3, yeah. um, which would be the same as on the last, on the last uh, GT3 RS, because the actual GT3 is about what the last GT3 RS was, and it's 30 at the back as well. But we're talking track here, and track is always measured from the middle of the rim, uh, and the rim is so wide with 13 inches, so it's even more at the sides uh, because the rim goes goes in both directions. And so the track goes a little bit in as well. Uh, so, but it's 30, 30 millimeters more track, and uh, the, the body is even more. And presumably, because you've got so much more aero, you've had to go up on the spring rate. Yeah, the spring um, rates are 50% higher than on a GT3. On a GT3, we were discussing about uh, that they're really, really high, very high, <laughs> yeah. and even more here. So, but still, thanks to the higher wall tires, yeah, the car is astonishingly complacent and good to drive even on a B-road. Um, that was not the target, that was a byproduct, mm. uh, but it works. You, should, you will try it. I uh, think we'll be in England uh, showing the car uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the media and there are some nice B-roads around. It, it's astonishing. I mean, it's a wide car, yeah. uh, but from the, from, the, from the suspension side, you can really live with it on a day-to-day -day -day basis, which is astonishing. I can't, I can't get my head around it. I couldn't we're, too we're, we're, we're before. In, <laughs> we're in, obviously, a sort of, you know, we're in a garage and it looks, it looks extreme sitting in kind of like it's almost natural habitat within Weissach. The idea of this out sort of in a normal setting, sort of, you know, parked up outside the pub down at Goodall, so it just, it's, it's mad. It Absolutely looks good mad. in a forest road. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, sure. I'm sure it does. It's, it's sort of, yeah. yeah. Um, the steering wheel on there. We've got quite a lot more circular. <laughs> it's circular, but there are some little circles inside. We have more satellites well. to operate and to work with, and, and this is another innovation on the car. I think they're very proud of. Um, I always see the, the guys at track days lying underneath their cars, <laughs> clicking compression and rebound, going out. Oh no, it was not good, and going back again. And it, it's time-consuming, and, and you get dirty. Mostly, it's hot. You don't want to do it. We can do it from the steering wheel. We can uh, influence the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the front end, on the front suspension and the rear suspension, um, rebound and compression, which helps a lot. You can really change the car's behavior. Even on the Autobahn, when you're tired after a track day, make the thing a little bit softer and really show us. And you can, you can really influence big time how the car turns in. The firmer you make the front end, the more direct it is. And you can, can adjust the electronical diff, another thing, yeah. as well from the steering wheel. So you can create your own setup. Mm. Uh, our works drivers have a ball with this. Uh, everyone says, I have a drive this, have a drive this. And, and it's really so much fun to get the best setting for a special day, for the individual that's driving. Um, it's, it's, it's a great, great addition to, uh, yeah, to, learning, to learning the physics of the car. And it's really something all the 
clicks and notches you have, you really notice. And that was important to us, not to offer like 120 uh, different settings and uh, you, get, you get lost and confused. It's very intuitive. We can show it, can show it to you on the, on the screen as well. And, and um, yeah, that's something that's a lot of fun. Yeah. It, and it helps to make you quicker and to set the car exactly up like you want it to have. Are you going to give people courses and how to do it? Is it going to be, come with a, a manual to show people kind of so they understand the, what they're trying to... Um, that's a good point it. because uh, you really have to know a little bit of the, about driving dynamics and the physics on a car. Um, I think, I think um, we should do something like that, maybe from the dealerships or the different markets on, but you feel it, you feel it very good. Maybe we write it down and um, or do some YouTube videos maybe with you <laughs> yeah. guys explaining it. Yeah. But we, you, you have always have to consider there's not a one setting for Silverstone, for example, mm. because you don't know what weather, what the weather will be. You don't know who will be at the wheels. We have cars, um, when we have two, co two works drivers on the cars, they have a complete different setup and are similarly quick. So it's a very individual thing, how you want the car to behave, what's best for you. You want a car that's a little bit more prone to oversteering because you feel comfortable with that. You want more like a stable car. Um, you, need, you, you need a different kind of or you need, you, you need a certain kind of, uh, of, of power when you, when you exit the curve. Mm -hmm. So you have to, have to put the diff, lock the diff pretty much up uh, when you have to space around it and when, 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 you, when you don't need the car to be too agile. It depends and it depends on, on a personal driving style. So, and that's a good thing about it. So we, 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 we don't want to bring out a brochure for track X, you need this and this and this settings because the settings that are there default, all with a zero, mm. are the ones we think everybody can, 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 can really be super quick with the car and get accustomed to the car. And from then on, everybody should try um, if it is beneficial for him to change a little bit. It means I can't, which be, is fun. It means I can't be critical of the car, doesn't it? Because basically I drive it and I say, well, I wish yeah. it did a bit more of this. Well, you change it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the, I'm fascinated by being able to change the diff settings as well. I think yeah, the diff setting can be changed and the traction control can be changed and the electronic stability control can be changed in different settings as well. So <laughs> it's like, like you're the driver and race engineer in one person. Yeah. And uh, you learn a lot about uh, driving dynamics doing it. Sure. And if you get lost, always go back to zero and, and start again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, rear wheel steer, so yep. just more yep. aggressive than... A little bit, a little bit. But, I mean, it's, uh, it's modified uh, in a way that the car can, uh, can take the most advantage of it. Different, uh, different curves, and, uh, but that's on every model. Um, we take into consideration the downforce of the car, the contact patch, the cornering speeds, and um, the track, as a matter of fact. So um, it's um, bespoke for the car, and it's exactly like it should be. Let's talk about the engine. We haven't talked about. Ah, we, 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 have, about we, have, we have an engine too, right? <laughs> yes. There yeah. is it. Uh, we're around here. Um, so it's not. I'd seen sort of there were all sorts of rumours going around beforehand about maybe it would go to 4.2 liters or something like that. But but no. We are um, 4.2 is, is is a pretty decent. Uh, I heard 4.5, 4.8. I heard 9.5. I heard 10.5 RPM. People out there, this is a street legal car. It had to meet emission standards. Yeah. On a race engine, making 570 horses on, on a four liter, no problem. We have to overhaul it every third race, no problem. We can make the power, but not as on a car with four liters that has a specific output of 100 and more than 130 horsepower per liter. This is top of the pops uh, that lasts forever and is bulletproof. That's important. And we didn't want to concentrate so much on the engine in that car because it's very easy to make performance and just upping the power more and more. We can't do on this normally aspirated engine that the customer wants. They want to put turbos on it. Yeah. And um, it has 15 horses more than a GT3. So it has higher uh, duration camshafts, hotter cams, yeah. um, the Americans would say. <laughs> and um, which you feel from 6,000 RPM to 9,000 redline, so it, it revs even more explosively and eagerly up to the top. We have um, different cylinder heads on the car with, uh, which uh, um, are from their oil volume um, modified to the GT3s because we have higher G loads on that car, obviously, if you look at this. So um, we like to have uh, 
only the oil we really need in the cylinder head, so we had made the passages a little bit smaller, so the casting is different in that case. The DME is different and the whole intake side is different to the GT3 as well, so all the way um, uh, including all, all the way in, including the airbox and air filter elements and all that, and that yells about 15 horsepower more. 525 now, 9,000 RPM. As a matter of fact, it really is a screamer, and um, we're quite happy because I think around 500 horses. I said it so many times. For me, it's still the sweet spot, even for a track car, because everything you add on top of that calls for even bigger brakes, even sturdier. Um, uh, suspension, you, you gain you gain weight, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's never let's been let, let, let's wait how fast the thing will go on the ring. And you're not, you're then, not saying yet how fast. Uh, we, to be honest, um, we, we we have a clearly a, a target, uh, and we think we can reach that, but not not under the conditions we have at the moment. It's I mean, it's, it's 35 degrees, and yeah, this is a normally aspirated engine. The cooler the air, the better it goes. Uh, on a turbo, it can always. A little bit, um, yeah, overcompensate with more with more pressure, um, but uh, we had some 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 delays on some on some late uh, parts as well. But uh, we we will have that in time, no problem. And it's never been the GT3 RS way to give lots more power over the GT3. It's it always been was. about the it never was. Yeah, the, it never the was. That's right. That's, anyway, that, that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, light weighting. Lightweight. Everything's carbon fiber, but <laughs> we painted it here because this is not the Weissach package car, yes. because the Weissach package car looks even wilder than this one. Um, it looks like crayon or, or chalk, <laughs> I think, the color. It is not. I mean, it's the light in here. If you, if you would roll it out in the sunlight, which we are not allowed to at the moment, it's almost whitish, a white metallic. So it's a, it, it, the, the trick of the light somehow. But yeah, lightweight. So the, uh, the wing is carbon fiber. Um, the, uh, the, the, the upper part as well. The ducktail is carbon fiber. The roof is carbon fiber. The fenders are carbon fiber. The doors are carbon fiber. <laughs> this is carbon fiber. So we have 90% of the car silhouette is bespoke and new and made of carbon fiber. Yeah. And this is um, something that pays in if you weigh the car logically for lightweight, for stiffness. And um, we have uh, extra light carpentry on the Weissach package. We even have a roll cage made of carbon fiber. And um, all the suspension parts are very lightweight. On the Weissach package, we have uh, stabilizers in carbon fiber. And uh, the, the linkage is in carbon fiber and the transversal strut in carbon fiber. So it's alone five kilos on the suspension when you opt for Weissach. Then we have magnesium wheels that take the weight down for eight kilos if you want them. And um, yeah, on the Weissach, there is uh, the roof in visible carbon fiber. The front end looks very hot because it's carbon fiber, but not all, not, not, not completely. So everything that's behind these nostrils here is painted in the exterior color. So you have these two stripes uh, over the car, which is very attractive, even more aggressive looking <laughs> for those who want even more aggression. And, uh, and um, the doors are lighter, as a matter of fact. So the lowest weight spec, and that's always what we communicate, because I think that's fair. Then the customer sees what's coming. Um, it's about 1,450 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a GT3 RS with Weissach package, with the PCCBs, and with the Max. That's about as low as you can go, okay. but with a full tank. That's not an Italian thing with a, with a star on top, so dry weight. The dry weight is much lower. It's the car full of gas, full of water, full of oil. Yeah. So ready to go. And how does that compare to GT3? So that's just a little uh, bit. It's 15 kilos heavier yeah. than a GT3 in the lowest spec. Uh, but if you look alone at the tires, I mean, a 13-inch rim in the back, 10 at the front, 275s, 235s. The aero modules, I mean, we, we, we shaved off seven kilos by using only one central cooler unit, but we put in another four on each side for the, for the aerodynamics, which we needed. And um, the wing at the back with its uh, power unit, mm. uh, the hydraulic the power unit, uh, consumes some weight too. But we could keep it in the neighborhood of a GT3, despite all the technology going on here. Yeah. And the wider body. I mean, it's a bigger car. Yeah. The, I'm fascinated by the carbon roll cage as well. Presumably it looks quite... It quite looks different. different. It has a different form. So the, the cross you're used to when you're looking in the rear view mirror is not there anymore. It, it's more like, like this because carbon fiber, you can put pressure on the carbon fiber tube and you can put it like that, but you, you, you can't like bend it. Uh, that's not what carbon fiber wants. And, so the construction looks a bit different and um, takes off some weight and it's 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 very special very cool cool looking thing yeah. 
Just to interject briefly, the Visac pack will set you back £22,515 without the carbon cage, or £25,739 with the carbon cage. Uh, talking carbon as well, we haven't mentioned brakes. Obviously, steel brakes are standard. And steel then... brakes are standard, PCCB is optional. The steel brakes on that one are a little bit beefed up if you compare them to the GT3, so they're a little bit thicker, adding some weight, yeah, but uh, sturdiness and longevity as well. Uh, we have a different compound, um, different compound um, brake pads now that are even, even better for heat. We have to use copper-free brake pads because this is the law, which was uh, a big challenge because copper is a good friction partner and if you have to leave it out, you start from scratch almost. So um, there was still a learning curve about that. Um, by the way, these uh, new brake pads fit the GT3 as well. And um, yeah, on the brake side, cooling revised on the, on the front end. And uh, you never have the feeling with both brakes uh, that the car is under braked. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm especially, I would say, I'm especially happy with the steel brake performance. Yeah. It's really good, really good. Because that's obviously something that you know, a lot of people that go to tracks yeah. generally they'll exactly. Opt for I mean, the, the, steel ex the exchange than... cost is, is, is a lot lower. Yeah. But uh, steel brakes that are, that are 408 mil in diameter as well, they look as beefy as, uh, as the PCBs. And uh, yeah, so these are only 410. That's 410, yeah. yeah. So two millimeters, so it's going, it's going you, you won't see the difference. Yeah. You won't see the difference, yeah. That's, um, that's something we're really happy with. Um, in general, all the car, the functioning of the car, we didn't have so much development time, and it was Corona, COVID, and, and there's a lot of trests and trials um, had to be postponed, and it, it, was, it was really a tough job. And all these exterior parts, we're producing it in the same line and, and the, as the other cars in Suffenhausen, mm -hmm. uh, to keep the quality guys happy that everything's as it should be, the joints. It's a high quality product, it should look high quality. So it's, there's been lots of challenges just beside making it quick, <laughs> yeah, just making it feasible as a project. So we went a long way and all, uh, in all different, uh, different regards here. So it's, it's really a major undertaking and it's a big step up from the last one. A couple of things on the aesthetics actually, because the badge this time is not going to be a sticker, is no, it? No, it's going to be. Good point. Look at this. No sticker. It is, I think here on this, on this photo car, it is a sticker. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah. it's not going but to it's be. But it's printed. On the, yeah. on, the, on the customer's cars, it will be printed and uh, clear coded. So you won't have any. You won't, you won't feel anything that has a sticker underneath. So it's a, a print process, it's like which is really, really, really cool. Very flat, aerodynamically helpful because this is <laughs> air stumbles. About. You don't, you don't want it yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> tripping over that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, the, the overall look of this particular car is, is aping um, the historic liveries of, of the past as well. Yeah. So you've yeah. got some other fun ones up the, your sleeve as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have an exclusive department which is happy to discuss a special request from customers and I think they will be busy. <laughs> <Thanks, sir. laughs> they will be busy. We're going to show a, a very nice spec car in, uh, in Monterey, in Monterey Car Week, yeah. in a couple of days. And um, yeah, the communication color is this ice gray metallic, um, which looks like a color we already have here, but it's metallic. You have to see it in the light outside. I'm a little bit disappointed that it can't show off its specialness under this light, but hey, um, come time and we will, just, we, will, we will see them in the sunlight. Quite nice, and the livery with the red. Should remind a little bit on the 50-year-old Carrera RS now. Mm -hmm. um, we changed the fonts a little bit to make them a little bit more modern looking. Um, but still, they remind me of the, of the, of the, of the first old RS uh, insignia. Um, so, yeah. Perfect. It is nice that the car looks nice as well. You want to walk away with it and turn around and stare at it again, be feeling happy. It's very, very important. It has to function well and it has to look good. Yeah. And um, I think we made it. Oops, we did it again uh, with this one. <laughs> so we're quite happy. But I'm happy when the project's over and finally in production, the customer gets their cars. Yeah. Yeah. That was an exhausting thing to develop. I'm sure. Um, is there anything else on the interior that we need to talk about? Because you changed some of the door card. Yeah, I mean, we can, we, can, we can sit inside. Why don't you sit at the yeah. driver's side and we go through everything we, uh, yeah, we find worth mentioning. Maybe wake the windows down. Cool. Yeah, so we've got a different, different uh, pattern for the, for, the, for, the, 
for the colorization of the seats, as you, as you see here. Mm -hmm. We have a, a net here to place your phone in or whatever, so there's a lightweight, lightweight uh, thought behind it. We have the straps, how do you call it? Mm -hmm. The straps yes, as, as door openers. If you have the Weissach package, you'll even have a, uh, a door handle, an inner door handle made of carbon fiber with a window cut in it. It looks super cool. And um, how are we on? On the steering wheel as well, on the, on the, on the, on the Weissach, you get longer paddles that go till here and are made of magnesium and have the same operating system than we have in the cup car, a magnetic operating system. So it's clicking, <laughs> it's clicking a little bit, reminding you of a race car. You should be able to tolerate that when you opt for Weissach. And, um, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice thing to, uh, yeah, to look at and to, to feel. Touch and feel is important. Gives a different feel. Um, and obviously you can still reduce all the, the screens down. Yeah, so you, can, you can do it on when you're yeah. going. I don't know how this is set up here. You can do it on, ah, put, it, put it on the track screen. And this is another very so important yeah. thing. You have the temperature of each individual wheel in degrees Celsius or, or Fahrenheit indicated here. Not like on some other cars like red, green or blue or whatever. The actual temperature. And this is really helpful on the track and, to, and even on the street when it's cold how much you can rely on the front end and uh, you can see how much how much temperature is in the tires and, and it really goes up in, 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 in degrees of, of, of one Celsius when you when you're like shaking the car up a little mm -hmm. like the Formula <laughs> One guys do you can really really see the difference here um, if you look at so we're in track mode now and in track mode you've got a track vision uh, mm -hmm. track vision means everything's a bit condensed everything you need to see uh, goes to the central uh, of the of the information display um, you don't have, have to look around the steering wheel because the outer edges are not clearly, clearly, clearly uh, um, visible when you're driving. And you have these four satellites here, which are bespoke to the RS and which are the new thing. And in track mode, only in track mode, you can influence, for example, the PASM, like the dampers. <laughs> and then you get oh, see, exactly yeah. the setup you see here on the steering right. wheel mirrored on the screen. So you have compression and rebound. You have the front axle, you have the rear axle. And you have these four buttons, so everything, it's, it's, it's intuitive that, yeah. that this um, is influenced by that one, because it's the blue one. Yeah. So you can, on the rear, um, get the compression up from zero or down. And so you can influence the individual dampers on the car. My first suspension tuning. I was <laughs> playing around for hours with that thing and, 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 and couldn't stop, yeah. because it really makes a difference. I mean. When you, when you stiffen the car up in some corners, it's really helpful because you've got a more direct steering. And um, that's how I used it. Yeah? Or on the way back on the autobahn, you just make that thing soft. And when, when, there, when there's some, some bumps in the road, and it, the car just levels out better and, and it's more and more easy to live with. Yeah. And, um, but it's, it's mainly there for being more competitive, not, not for making it softer on the road. So yeah. that's not the yeah. point. It's a byproduct. We've got DRS. DRS there. button, yeah. So. The IS button works only when the car is rolling, okay. so, so and, and you have to get out this, uh, this mode where you have this, um, um, mm -hmm. where you have the, uh, the, the, the compression and, and rebounds. Mm -hmm. But just to finish that off, if you push the, uh, the PTV Plus, so that's the diff, yeah, mm -hmm. you're getting this and you can, can influence the diff coast on coast power. and yeah. power. <laughs> uh, coast power. Obviously, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Then you can go here, if you go to the traction control mode, you can go into the right side, so at the, at the, at the upper uh, circle is the traction control and the lower circle is the electronic stability control, which is off, dynamic or on. And in dynamic mode, because these two, uh, these two functions are uh, clinging together, you can have a choice of only the settings that are highlighted yeah, on the yeah. circle so you can't tell it completely off uh, if you yeah. want to have it completely off then you have to turn the stability system off and only then yeah. Yeah, so it makes sense yeah. Yeah. so it's linked together yeah. it might sound confusing at first but when we're driving the car you will see it's super intuitive absolutely so and if we come and go back here you see the drs not ready so this is a drs button mm -hmm. Um, that's the button we normally use to tell you in a normal career you would uh, activate the voice control. <laughs> um, we thought DRS uh, makes more sense in an RS. And um, it shows you as soon as the DRS system is ready to, uh, to, to operate, it shows DRS ready. Okay? And DRS ready shows only when you're in high downforce mode. Uh, when, okay. you're, when you're in default, this is not working. Default is uh, 
or, or def default is with low downforce. Mm -hmm. And um, but the air brake is always activated, even if you're in okay. low downforce. If, if you're in dynamic downforce, you can influence it, um, push it up or down with the with the, with, the, with the left thumb. Yeah, which and makes a huge difference. That's really cool. A couple of different buttons here as well for um, presumably lap, yeah. lap timing. This is the lap timing yes. button. So yeah, this Maybe. is. Uh, um, what you can do with the with the with the with the with the, with the um, how is that app called? Hardly use it. Um, oh, the track app. Track app. The track yes. app. Beautiful yeah. thing, um, but um, yeah, I didn't have the time to really enjoy it properly. <laughs> um, same gearbox. The gearbox there, is a little bit. Yeah, it's the same. There's small changes. We have uh, some. It's a short final some drive. Some uh, it's, it's a shorter final drive, but to overcompensate or to compensate the bigger diameter of the rear wheels. Because on a 335, as a matter of okay. factly, um, um, the, the gearing, if we would have used the GT3 Spox, would have been a little bit longer. So we have to compensate for that with a shorter so final drive. So to bring drive. it back down. The oiling in the, the oiling in the in the in, in some bearings is uh, differentiated, and the material of some bearings. So it's bespoke, but it's 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 not a huge big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the the gearbox, it's it's it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. There's not much you can <laughs> you can improve upon the GT3s. Um, Talking of timing, is that the? Hey, this is this is, this, <laughs> this is a very very cool um, watch. That is this this, this one is set up uh, on a car that I use, which is uh, Azzurro, Azzurro Tetis, this uh, Lambo Silver, <laughs> and it has silver wheels. It has the Weissach package because it has the Weissach wheels, and uh, it's, it's car, it's, it has a carbon fiber dial, mm. and it, it's it's really nice, and um, and it mirrors the internal the, the, the interior like with the yes. microfiber. Race tags in the. I love the little um, born in flacht. Born in flacht, yeah, right? There, which is um, that's very cool, isn't it? Actually, the car is born in flacht. The watch is born in Switzerland. Well, Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. There we go. There's titanium as well. How lovely! It's very cool. I would like to give it to you, but I, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick my scarf. So. Yeah. <laughs> Andreas, thank you, as ever, very much. A joy has ever it's been a lot of fun. Absolute pleasure. Didn't notice cameras running, but they were. They were. <laughs> the next thing to do is drive it. We'll be on your home turf. Yes. So you don't have to travel <laughs> uh, a long way to be able to enjoy the car, and um, you'll be really astonished. You will be astonished uh, how that car feels in some corners. I because think I you, we think we know the track. You know the track quite well where we've been driving, and uh, yeah. you're gonna gonna uh, set some new records, <laughs> some new personal records. I think. <laughs> I can't wait. Thank you very much indeed. You're so welcome. <laughs>